Welcome everybody to One Stage at a Time, the podcast where we're playing through video games one stage at a time, not skipping a single level. We are coming close to the end of Doom, the original Doom 1993 expansion, technically. We, we finished the original Doom, we, now we're playing through E4, we are on E4, M5, they will repent. My name is Aaron Neeson and I'm joined by Andy Prim. Hello, Andy. Hello, Aaron. How you doing today? I'm doing great. You know, the Super Bowl's on TV, but I ain't watching it. I'm recording oh, hell a no. <laughs> video game podcast with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and we are joined by Sam Ingersoll. Hello, Sam. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? Good, good. Glad to, to hear talk it. about some doom. Gentlemen, let's talk doom. Let's do it, folks. I'll uh, hit you with some quick stats up front here. This is indeed the fifth mission of episode four of Doom from 1993. And as Aaron said, it is called They Will Repent. It was designed by Tim Willits, a friend who we met previously. And it uh, uses the music track Waltz of the Demons by your friend and mine, Bobby Prince. There are only two secrets in this stage. And as far as enemies, we've got a bevy of them. We've got 13 sergeants, four specters, 16 imps, 10 demons, 26 troopers, three caco demons, 17 last soul, lost souls, and a single baron of hell. Well, uh, let's, uh, with that out of the way, why don't we have some opening remarks for E4M5? Aaron. Um, this was another one that kind of perplexed me. It's, it's another one that felt like it should have been much earlier in the episode. It was, it was a fun level. I actually liked this level. I actually liked it. This isn't a, what are we doing here? This was, this level was pretty fun for me. Uh, I enjoyed myself. Um, again, sort of not really feeling any sort of narrative, but that's okay. Cause it was fun enough. Uh, but again, easier, much easier than the first two levels in this episode. And it's just, it's like, well, you guys got me primed to hate myself. Like you got the oven, but you're not cooking anymore. You heated it up. It's, but that's now cause, that's... it's cause we want you to stick your head in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's like either, either make me, make me hate myself or, you know, like give, give me a story or something. This, but again, this level was more fun. I had more fun than I did the last level, but it's, it's just this whole episode feels weird and this doesn't change anything about that. Okay. Well, uh, Sam, give us your opening remarks uh another concept level so aaron i'll go with aaron's analogy about the oven so the first episode three episodes you're like you're going to the oven oh man there's this great stuff you don't ever see anyone make anything but you just go to the oven there's something in there you're eating it what you don't realize episode four they just they they're cleaning the oven they've they've turned on the <laughs> automatic cleaner it's cooking but it's not really meant to, there's nothing there to eat there's just the leftovers and and like the stains from previous levels left in there uh <laughs> cool level i liked it but again it feels like this is a really cool concept of like a fortress like i think this is actually the coolest like like fortress level like it feels like a cool like like fortress i keep saying that but then like that's what it feels like um i think there's a point i may have just been stupid and not remembered how to get back out of where i was at where i couldn't backtrack it felt like yeah um i i got to the end but i'd never found the blue key and i could not find a way to go back to go look and pass in the previous section so i i I just it ended it um a couple uh not enough uh radiation suits i would say for this level um overall not a bad level but uh i think we're just kind of like running on fumes here well uh for as far as compared to previous doom entries and i think that's going to keep getting repeated um it was fun it was cool but um nothing new at this point well i will give my opening remarks i thought this was a great level i i kind of uh if if it's your oven metaphor here if if it's like a hot oven and nothing's in it it, this level, level was a nice surprise. It's like if you thought the oven was empty, but then you slid open that broiling drawer and there's a nice <laughs> shepherd's pie in there. Or like a little chicken nugget fell down. <laughs> it's just, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Real quick, you, this, so uh, nothing to do with the level, but just some weird coincidence. I ate shepherd pie tonight. <laughs> hey, there you and go. And I haven't Thanks. had or heard of, she- heard of like the words shepherd pie in years, 
before this evening and now it's haunting me for some reason this is it's it's a edit, you just mentioned point. it what the fuck's going on guys it's do i need a, to go we could get a herd it's a multiversal convergence point where <laughs> like all, all of the potential energy in the universe is focused on shepherd's pie got some wanda the last time i had there. a shepherd's pie i lived in st louis me it's too. like from Llewellyn's or something, maybe, maybe yeah, Llewellyn's, whatever one of those. So. <laughs> there, oh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's that it's there's like a Scottish the place one. in yeah. the yeah, loop, Scottish, not the loop Scottish, 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 Scottish Arms, yeah, Dressels yeah. or something. Dressels, yeah. yeah. I mean, Dressels had the good. No, we're getting way off topic here. Yeah, yeah, we are. Uh, yeah. the, the beer ch- batter, the beer cheese chips was at Dressels, I think. That was really mm. good. Uh, Northern Lion was talking about Shepherd's Pie the other day. And I was telling Sarah about it, and she's like, Oh, I've never had it. And I was like, Oh, we should make sure it's fine. But fucking Northern Lion, he's always like humble bragging. He's like, Look, I'm not a very good cook, but it's easy to make shepherd's pie. And he just describes like, you know, 25 <laughs> steps that are like really difficult to do. And he's like, and that's all you got to do. It's easy. <laughs> it's just sloppy Joe covered in mashed potatoes, guys. It's easy. <laughs> it, pretty much. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry to inter- I was I'm sorry to interrupt your train of thought, but you found a yummy shepherd's pie, and it was this level. So I actually like this level and I feel like it has like a actually a pretty good narrative in terms of like the visual storytelling of the stage. There's a through line that uh, literally a, a line that runs all throughout this stage and kind of ties everything together. So there's some nice theming in terms of like the the gameplay of the stage and like, you know, the the moment to moment action of fighting enemies. I feel like that's a little bit weaker. There's not as many like thrilling encounters and there's even a few like bullshit parts uh but like in terms of like the the structure and the aesthetics of the level i thought it was very strong so let's get into it let's let's kind of talk our way through it of course the kind of the most obvious thing that we see at the beginning here is this fountain of blood right in Mm -hmm. the lobby here and that's going to kind of uh just lead us all throughout this fortress that we're in and, and kind of tie all the rooms together we've got this river of blood flowing out of this big fountain kind of downward and then crisscrossing through all the different rooms that we will encounter on our trip through they will repent why is this blood hurt us is it boiling blood you think or is it like corrupted for somehow through the through the machinations of hell or why is why does just a river of blood hurt us so bad maybe it doesn't hurt and he's just going ew 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 ew. (laughs) he's just grossed out (laughs) <laughs> it, it turns out Doom Guy is like really persnickety and do, he has like a he likes to be clean, doesn't like getting his hands dirty. Yeah, he's, he's a hypochondriac. He's, <laughs> his real face when he's killing everyone, he's just like <laughs> that's why he's always grimacing on in his little portrait on the bottom middle uh, the health packs are just wet wipes and the the blue health bottles are just water that he's like constantly r- rinsing himself off it's just hand, hand sanitizer forever unclean <laughs> want to catch coronavirus <laughs> all these bodily and, uh, fluids he, are hazardous he, he armor, always keeps well, his mask sense. on all the armor is like a new shirt and another hat another yeah. helmet you yeah. know, he's just constantly changing, just throwing his old clothes away. That's we figured it out. We figured it out. And question asked and answered. Well done, gentlemen. We got there. We did it. But I do, Andy. Uh, you know, it, it may sound like I, I hated this level, which I didn't. I, it was a lot of fun, um, and I agree with you completely. Like I think, like the design of this level is really cool. Mm-hmm. Like it, it feels like a step towards more modern game design, mm-hmm. and the fact that it's like they thought about it being a building and what a building might be like within yes. the constraints of doom. Uh, <laughs> and so, Guys, you know, <laughs> what is a building like? Yeah. <laughs> and everybody's, everybody looks over at Tim, like, what the fuck are you talking about? What's a building? Like, like we don't, about? we don't talk. We don't think about that here. <laughs> Romero got everybody like in a conference room and like, he sat on his chair backwards, like Riker. And he was like, listen, guys, what is a building? <laughs> We're going to do a real building. And everyone's like, Oh, Everyone guessed silent, silently to themselves. <laughs> and, th- and then he left for like two months and like went and just like played <laughs> video games and turned it <laughs> It's like, now go make it. <laughs> uh, we'll get into this, but uh, Tim Willits is the credited creator of this level. But as we know, Tim Willits is a serial credit thief, according to American McGee. And there, there is uh, some evidence to suggest he did not actually make this level. Really? We'll we'll get into that a little bit later. Is it another like I had the idea for we should no he was the one who sat down on a chair and said <laughs> we're gonna do a real building and then he fucked off and everyone else made it. And he's like, Well, I mean it was my idea, guy. I it was my I'm the one who thought of it. 
Yeah, well, it's it's an interesting story, and I don't have the full the full uh, scoop. You know, it's just sort of bits and pieces. But but we'll get into that a little bit later. So the stage itself, we we start at the top, kind of in this little foyer. There's some dudes around. We got this fountain of blood. There's like a caco demon outside a window that can kind of ambush you. And then you move from there into uh, the next room. There's windows where you can see all these different rooms that you can't get to quite yet, but you can like snipe off guys before you actually get there, which is kind of nice. But really kind of the structure of this level is like moving like forward and downward, following the flow of this blood river as it, you know, goes through all these little channels and down little waterfalls. Forward, and... downward, and always twirling, twirling, <laughs> twirling. Don't blame me. I voted for Kodos. <laughs> uh, so our first task is to get the red key, which is like uh, not too hard to do, but you have to go through a couple of these rooms full of like all these like blood walls and, and blood rivers on the ground. But like the, my, my biggest gripe uh, here at the beginning and kind of goes for the whole stage is like the enemies just aren't that threatening. They're really more annoying than anything. Mm -hmm. I pretty much used my shotgun for this entire stage. I didn't have, feel the need to use like the, the chain gun or the plasma gun or even the rockets all that much. Really. It was just shotgun city. It's funny because like usually I'm like that in this level. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm using my rocket launcher as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I just I, exploded everyone in this goddamn place. <laughs> I started using it just because I would run into rockets that I couldn't pick up because I had full rocket ammo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, no, really I really encourage I agree. you to use them. Yeah. It, this really the the level screams later stuff, but the gameplay is like this is like early like episode one you know mission two feeling threat level even with even the baron of hell at this point is like oh, okay oh there's one baron of hell way over there not mm -hmm. a problem yeah so yeah i mean i think the the barrels were more of a threat if you weren't paying attention to where they were at yeah <laughs> i kept like i kept on like trying not to shoot them in order to save them like because i'm now trained to expect a wall to open up and be swarmed by a bunch of enemies so i'm like i bet a wall's gonna open up i'm gonna need those barrels so i wouldn't shoot them and then like nothing would happen i'm like just give me get, got me some demon blue balls here man <laughs> <laughs> yeah i gotta say like that one baron is really he's just like is not a threat at all you when, no, like, when you you walk into a room you see him like way far across the way he's not even really attacking you he's like in fighting with other guys and you can just like pick him off with rockets Mm -hmm. and there's some other guys there too but he's yeah he's far enough away that when he starts blasting at you you can just step to the side nothing yeah nothing in here was annoying it was just more kind of exploring and running around and then eventually getting stuck on the other half of the zone of the level and not being able to uh get out yeah uh, that happened to me too. Like there, and in fact, there's, so after you get the red key, you get into, it gets a little more complex after that because it's pretty linear before you get the the red key. But then once you go through the red key doors and end up in the second area, there's like a bunch of ways you can go. There's a few red doors that lead into the next area. So, and then we're trying to get the blue key now, but like they kind of fit together in different ways. There's like more than one entrance to each of the rooms. Like you might, there's one that takes you in on the, on the top and there's one that takes you in on the bottom. Um, you can go, you can, uh, get a, a rad suit and, and make your way through the blood river and like bypass one of the doors. And that's how you can end up skipping the blue key by, and, and I did the same thing, Sam, if you just go through the blood river and get the rad suit, you can go past where you would need the blue key, but you can't get back up because you you like jump down to get into the river. And then once you get to the point where you can get out of the river, the only way back is by opening a blue key door, but you've skipped oh, the blue key. Okay. Yeah. That's what happened to me. And I was just like, well, same. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go to the next level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I even went and got the uh there's like a clever uh near the end uh air quotes puzzle to get uh, the BFG, uh which was kind of fun, I thought, and a little interesting. Yeah, you basically, I, you know, you, you you there's a couple of places near the end where you have to kind of balance on a balance beam. There's a I can't remember what's on the first one. Was it one of the keys, maybe? Yeah, uh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, and you kind of have to like run across, do a little run jump. But there's a you can look, you get to the exit. I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit, sorry, but I figured I was already talking about it. No, uh, no, you get no. the exit, and there's like a little lip that you can't jump over, like surrounding like the little like pillar where the exit's at. But then if you look, connecting that that same level of the 
the lip, there's another little balance beam and a BFG out there. And you're like, hmm, I want to get that. And you look behind you and there's, if you go up the stairs and back around, there's a whole window to jump out of. You have to like hop onto the ledge surrounding the exit, walk around a couple corners, and then you can jump across and, and get the BFG if you don't have it already. Yeah, so That's this cool. would be the first chance to get the BFG if you hadn't gotten it in uh, level two. Mm -hmm. where uh where we uh telefragged the yeah. uh, dj cyber demon <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah bfg watch is concluded we have we have obtained the bfg uh, there's no excuse not to have it anymore but yeah like sam said you got to do this tricky little quote unquote puzzle um but it's kind of cool you can actually bypass the yellow key this way too because you're supposed to like do all these shenanigans with a teleporter to get off up, up onto one of these like thin narrow ledges to get the yellow key um, but you can just jump through the window like you're going for the BFG, and that just skips the yellow key door entirely. So you can I, skip both the blue and yellow doors here. I actually died uh, by jumping through the window and like landing amongst them. And I thought I had a decent amount of health, but those shotgun guys just tore me apart immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like the biggest danger in this stage is like leaping before you look and like ending up on, on damage floor with like shotgun guys and lost souls bearing down on you. It's not mm -hmm. actually like the big threatening enemies. It's more just like bullshit stuff, like guys are sniping you off or whatever. Yeah, I think that the uh, the the lost souls were definitely annoying to me in this level. Like I would be just going about my business, and because they're like lurking down below, you don't really necessarily see them or know that they're there. Even if you hear them, you know it's like, well, you're always hearing noises. You never know where they are, and then all of a sudden you're just getting hurt, and you're like, what is happening as you're trying to shoot a you're, you're shooting a fucking pinky across the room and something, yeah. something's hurting you and you're just like, fuck, <laughs> stop it, ow! <laughs> <laughs> There's too many of these bastards. Mm -hmm. So there are only two secrets. We've kind of gotten to the end already. I mean, it's a fairly big stage, but fairly straightforward, I guess. It, I, although it gets kind of complex. But I don't know. There's just not much more to say about it. it. It's sort of like there's the red key area, then the blue key area, then the yellow key area, and then you're done. But there are two secrets, which just like the previous Tim Willits map, there's just two and they're totally pointless. Uh, one is just like a little shutter you raise up and there's just two regular health packs in there, the small kind, not even the big ones. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is another shutter you raise up, which you can kind of tell it's there because like it's not fully closed. There's like some space between it and the ground. Then you open it up and it's just a berserk pack in there. Um, I didn't find either of them and I can't really say I feel compelled to go back in the, and replay the stage just to get them. Yeah, I'm kind of getting that feeling myself as we get closer to the end and the quality gets a little mixed on these levels. It was fun, but like, I don't feel like, oh no, I got I to gotta be all a doom on the hardest difficulty and get all the secrets because I feel like I've already done yeah. that and now I'm not really playing real doom anymore. Sorry, I'm not playing real doom anymore. Or it's not real doom. <laughs> I mean, Big Mac Davis is still getting all the secrets. Salute to him. Uh, even though he cheated on that one stage, but uh, I, I admired the man's dedication. He, he, I've watched some of his other videos on other games. Big Mac Davis will not settle for less than a hundred percent, no matter how stupid and tedious it is. You got to respect the hustle. It's not something I would ever do, but you got to respect the hustle. You really yeah. do. Some games are just not meant to be a hundred percented. Like, uh, I, I don't know if you guys saw uh, the completionist Gerard uh, Khalil. He he did a video on. Uh, getting 100% on Legend of Zelda Hyrule Warriors. It took him like mm. 600 hours. It was insane. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like, oh, I, I, like, I, I don't understand the compulsion, but I like understand the compulsion. Yeah. Um, but Jesus Christ, 600 hours. What? I mean, like, that's his job. So yeah. that's fine. It's his job. It's what he does. It's his job and he loves it. And that's great. But like, yeah, who would make a game where like for sending it is even a thing when it would take that long? Like that's that's some like that's some sociopath shit. Yeah, right yeah. There. Like knowing that people are out there who have to 100 percent it like it's a compulsion <laughs> for them. That's fucked up, man. <laughs> I, I, like Bill Trennan is like personally taunting Gerard Khalil. <laughs> a few times i've felt like doing that it's when i've already almost done it and then i just still don't do it anyways yeah, when like, are I you gonna 100 even... final fantasy 14 sam <laughs> i'm working on it okay <laughs> okay okay that actually the next expansion they're actually bookending they're doing what i hope they would do which is yeah. they're the next expansion will be the end of this the current story arc they've been doing since the launch and so 6.0 and then the first uh 
patch 6.1 will be starting a new story going forward with all the same characters so i, I read uh, I'm something super, about that yeah the, i'm very happy that they decided to do that because i'm hoping that they will then let people start at the new story so they don't necessarily have to play because the way instead of like wow we can play every expansion from the beginning you have to start from the beginning because it's technically it's like a regular final fantasy game you can't just skip you can you can actually can pay money like 25 bucks to skip a story arc oh, if you that want sucks but you have to get yeah, your character is level one and they start at the beginning of the game and you have to play through the game to get to whatever the current content is level 90 will be next uh so this is going to be like killing the final boss this is like going to yeah. mm -hmm. uh the the north crater and fighting sephiroth this is in game it's called in walker but it's like we're, in game for we're, we're going we're going to the moon we're fighting <clears throat> Golbez. Yep. it's the culmination of everything they've done since uh 2.0 at least so i'm excited it'll be cool right. to finally see how things wrap up and what they want to do next oh uh, well all so right what what 3.0 or 4.0 is <laughs> <clears throat> they're on this will be 6.0 is the newest one uh and then 6.1 will be who knows yeah it's you know they're, who they're knows? chugging along making some great the best final fantasy story that's been out in years yeah hey <laughs> you know and props to them square enix they got to make their money somehow and mm -hmm. it's it's cool that they're doing that i mean i haven't played it but from what i understand it's cool and has a good story so mm -hmm. yeah, i'm yeah. glad that they're still doing it it's definitely it's definitely uh out of you know compared to the other final fantasy stuff they've been putting out uh it's definitely more final fantasy feeling you know it's definitely because yeah. it's the way it's designed it pulls from all of that you know like uh like the last expansions raid tier was all themed on like final fantasy 8 mm. so like all the music is pulled from that and like eden was in the first wing was like the boss and she does the full summon and everything oh, it's really oh. cool yeah it's cool. It's real nostalgic and fun, and it's yeah. it's a lot of fun playing. Yeah, cool. man, fucking fucking chocobos, man. Yeah, sure in there. <laughs> Co I, I know about a fantasy guy. And go the gold saucer. <laughs> oh fuck yeah! There, I'm mm -hmm. in. I wanna I wanna do the arm wrestling mini game at gold saucer. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, well, let's finish talking about this level. Uh, I think that honestly, we've kind of gotten to the end already. Like, there's uh, not much more to say about it uh we can we can go to final verdict uh i'll start i think that like like i said aesthetically i think this is one of the strongest stages from that standpoint in terms of like it feels more modern and how it's got a theme like that ties it all together and runs all the way through it like uh you know it feels more more like a real building like in the yeah. context <laughs> of doom where a building you know built by demons that's caught between earth dimension and hell dimension this feels like what that building would be like there would be like a really showy blood fountain and then they would have it just like going through all the different rooms like frank lloyd wright designed it or something but but i really like that and then we terminate in like the blood pool where it all ends up at the end and then that's where the exit is um but in terms of the gameplay and the actual gun battles they were more frustrating than than exciting i thought like there's no moments where you just run into a room where there's like a horde of demons and you just whip out that plasma gun and just mow them all down or use your bfg to take out like three barons at the same time there's nothing like that mm -hmm. see i i agree you know uh, a a, a, sh a great shell with nothing inside literally nothing they give you a bfg that you don't need for the level yeah they've never done that they usually yeah. whenever they give you something big it's because you need it not this level but but man is it a really it's like a fabergé egg you know it's <laughs> yeah. really cool and awesome but there's nothing in, of substance inside yeah pretty much mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys have pretty much covered it. I don't really have anything to add. I I did, like I said, I had fun with the level. I thought it was cool, but it was just like, it was uh, not particularly challenging and not, didn't give me any sort of feeling of fulfillment when I finished it. No, no catharsis. So it's like, okay, that one's done. Moving on. We are all the disappointed fathers to this stepchild of a level. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Not live up to its potential. We're we're daddy warbucks and enjoying our bubbly and wondering why Annie can't be more of a benefit to society. <laughs> yeah, it could have been cool. It feels again, you know, like something that they didn't have time for in a real game. Yeah. Well, uh, as we know, all of the stages in episode four have names that come from the Bible, and this one is no exception. They will repent comes from Luke chapter 16, verse 30, which reads, No father Abraham, 
but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. I haven't read uh, enough of the Bible to know what the context for that <laughs> little line is. It's a little ambiguous out of context, but uh, I, I suppose it's something about like if, if an evil spirit goes to you or I don't know, something about repenting and the dead it's and who knows. Some kind of Bible less, shit. <laughs> less sexy than the, than the poison tongue one. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Uh, okay, now let's get into Tim Willits a little bit because this, this guy just keeps surprising me. Again? <laughs> as as he, we... Okay, no, go ahead. Say what you are going to say. Aaron. I was just going to say, he's the one who designed the multiplayer map, right? Correct. Yeah. He's not... Is he the war criminal? Or is he... He's not the one we hate, is it? I don't think I so. I, I feel like we said... Uh, it was either Sean Green or American McGee that we said was a war criminal. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay, yeah, but Tim Tim is the credit stealer, the one who claimed yeah. to invent multiplayer maps. Yes. And, he and invented the multiplayer game. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. It's great. <laughs> and then you know, Big Dick Tom Hall is like, um, excuse me. <laughs> but but like but he's also like we we've, we've covered it. He wasn't like wrong. Because they had made maps that they then were like, we're going to use this for multiplayer. And Tim Willits, according to them even, was like, I'm going to make multiplayer specific maps, specifically yeah. for multiplayer. Right. But well, you know, that's yeah. that's what he said happened. But Tom Hall had made maps specifically for multiplayer in Rise of the Triad several years before. So Tim Willits was just demonstrably wrong or lying one of maybe the two. he didn't maybe he never played that game and no one ever told him about it <laughs> how, how could how could he have missed out on rise of the triad <laughs> i know i know i bought it for every system and most phones but maybe tim somehow <laughs> missed it <laughs> the game that introduced multiplayer maps aaron <laughs> yeah no this, this is one of those situations where it's like you can't prove that he actually copied but a court would say that it doesn't matter because rise of the triad was so big there's no way he could have missed it <laughs> <laughs> all right well uh as we know uh, tim willits has been accused perhaps never proven but he's been accused of stealing credit by the likes of american mcgee and uh, it turns out, according to doom.fandom.com, the original layout for this map was done by who else but Tim's own sister, who's no. named Teresa Chaser. I, and oh, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't have any more information than that. But apparently Teresa had the idea, and it's like you were saying, Sam, like a beautiful shell with nothing in it. My, uh, from what I can gather, it seems like Teresa had the idea for like the Blood River and like laid it all out. And then Tim, you know, who maybe knew a little bit more about programming came in to like implement it. And then that's where he kind of like fucked up and botched the execution with like the enemy placement and all the, you know, the stupid secrets and stuff like that. He's like one of those birds that like they lay their egg in another bird's nest and then it hatches and pushes all the other birds out of the nest. <laughs> is that what is that a kookaburra or something i don't know is some asshole is what he <laughs> no, the, 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 the kookaburra is eating the gumdrops right yeah yeah that's what i heard <laughs> yeah it's like he's like one of those birds yeah he is he's uh and I, who knows you know maybe his sister was delighted to like be able to contribute to something like this yeah. but uh yet again it's uh you know tim willits is uh not living up to his own hype I hear that, that we, we've established Tim Willis is a stupid bird. That's what Tim Willis is. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking bird. <laughs> Next time on the show, Aaron gets sued by Tim Willis. <laughs> <laughs> he called Paras me, he said I'm a bird. I'm not a, a bird. <laughs> Aaron gets sued by parasitic bird Tim Willis. Whatever you said his name was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Litigate me, Tim. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, Aaron, Aaron's a lawyer. Don't question it. <laughs> I could be a lawyer. Anybody can be a lawyer. That's true. Like, Anybody Andy could be a be lawyer. A, I could Andy be a could lawyer. Be. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, it's, it's shockingly easy to be a lawyer. I, I say this to a lot of people and they think I'm, you know, like bragging or like uh, being an ass, but the bar exam is not that difficult. It's a test of minimum competency and the pass rate is extremely high, except in <laughs> California. So, like, there's a lot of dumb dumbs out there. Who are yeah, like, like that one guy from Florida who had a hard on for duncan on gta all those years 
Oh yeah. You remember that guy? No one cares about that, anymore. Oh, Especially was, Rockstar doesn't care anymore. Damn, what was that guy's name? I don't, I don't remember, but he was a he was around for a long, long time. And yeah. He was, he was the guy, Aaron. You look a little like you don't know what we're talking about. Uh, like r- right when uh, they decided to like form the Jack PSRB. Thompson was it Jack Thompson? It might be Jack Thompson. So like when Congress was like, you need to rate yourself, or we're gonna do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, this guy like kind of crawled up from the scum of Florida, and like decided to like just keep going like, when no one cared anymore. Yeah, and was like going on and on, but it, specifically about how. You know, games are make are gonna make all of our children pedophiles and rapists and and murderers. And he would just go on about GTA, like that's all he did was GTA, GTA, GTA. Uh, he got disbarred, I think, eventually because of something related to it. Like probably. Uh, I was gonna say, it sounds like someone needs to check that man's computer. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> GTA <laughs> made me do it. <laughs> it feels like all the people who are screaming about pedophiles yeah it I might be a, projecting a little bit but it, it might be a jared fogel situation maybe yeah. i don't know oh, God. jack thompson yeah I, I looked up anti-gta lawyer and he was he, he popped up you know what our, our children will never know how funny it was when subway jared got busted taken <laughs> to prison for cp I, listen liz i i get that you say it's funny but like i was genuinely horrified like <laughs> did you like i i read about the shit that he did that is not a laughing matter. That man. No, is I mean he's a monster. No, no, no. It's more monster. about like, the idea Good of Lord. like that he was like a fast food pitch man for such a long time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 absurd. It's yeah. completely absurd. The whole yeah. But like Jesus fucking Christ, don't look into it if you want to sleep well at night. Well, yes, that, that's that's a good point. Good advice there, Aaron. Thank you for adding that little <laughs> tidbit. <laughs> let's come. Let's we, let's talk more about cutting creatures open and spilling their guts everywhere in, in a well, video game. Uh, let's <laughs> let's do that. So next stage, uh, which we will be playing in about a week's time, is called Against the Wickedly. Um, but I think that's about all we have to say about uh, this particular level and about Tim Willits. Um, I, I think we might run into Tim Willits another time before the end of episode four. But if not, see you later, Tim. Good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> and may we never meet again <laughs> but your sister has some cool ideas man that's true <laughs> Teresa Acer if you're out there you know you need to be making some more games or at least coming up with ideas for maps because you did a good one here I think mm-hmm. that it's weird because it, it, does, it does seem kind of like a bifurcated level like the the map design and the aesthetics is one of the strongest if not the strongest in terms of like theming and narrative and visual storytelling feels very ahead of its time but then the implementation of like where the items and the enemies are laid out just feels so crappy and and just like you know worse than like you know episode one just just very like the, like no thought put into it at all very kind of haphazard and just doesn't really work that well yeah yeah i i agree it's very cool aesthetics very cool feel very cool uh the atmosphere but just just falls kind of flat after yeah. that as far as everything else Totally. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's switch gears, boys. I, I have a few uh, gaming headlines uh, for us to talk about today in the second half of today's program. And the first thing I wanted to talk about, have you guys heard that there are like a bunch of Sonic the Hedgehog rumors uh, going around right now? Uh, in, in, in regards to game, I know they fired the guy who did the voice for years. Yep. I don't know if he was other fired, guy. but they've they've parted ways. They've yeah, parted yeah. ways. He, uh, and some yeah. other guy has already done some voice acting for a new show or something. Yeah. Uh, that's all I heard. I didn't hear anything else. Yeah, there's a new show, uh, Sonic Prime, I think it's called. That's going to be coming out as a computer animated show. I don't know anything beyond that though. Doctor Robotnik, Prime. the voice, the voice actor, is still the same. Yes, or the excited on Twitter about it. Where it belongs. <laughs> yes. So uh, <laughs> Kevin Pollak, the current voice of Doctor Robotnik, uh, aka Doctor Eggman, has confirmed that he will continue voicing the Good Doctor, which he's done for like seventeen years now, ever since the great Dean Bristow passed away, who was the voice of Robotnik in uh, the Sonic Adventure games. But um, yeah, everybody else got the axe, including Roger Craig Smith. Uh, the voice of Sonic, Cindy Robinson, the voice of Amy Rose, and Colleen O'Shaughnessy, the voice of Tails. They are all out the door and kicked to the curb. Um, This is according to uh, rumors and leaks that I read on NeoGAF, which is, uh, as we know, uh, an incredibly reliable source and should not be questioned. But apparently this all comes from a reliable leaker. 
But that that was just the tip of the iceberg. There's a bunch more stuff that this leaker's talking about, and it all coincides with Sonic's 30th anniversary, which I uh, presume is this year. Yes, yes, I, I believe that that's accurate. I honestly thought of my. So I guess they're they're gonna but, gonna try and like redo reboot the franchise and let's get a yeah. clean slate. Dude, yeah, yeah. The, it's you know the, the, they good say, luck. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't had a, a very good history of doing anything right like I, do you think I, oh man this is so confusing like because i didn't know about tails and amy also parting ways with sega may, definitely makes me makes it sound like sega might have been the instigator there um, oh yeah because, they, yeah because of them all i wonder like did did Ta like did she voice tails in the sonic movie too yes you know? she did yeah she did in, in that's that definitely she did that definitely makes me think that she was a little too expensive for them. Maybe like as far as her, just her, like I, but I don't know. I don't know. This is all yeah. very, that's news to me. This is the first uh, time I'm hearing about it. It so. sounds like for whatever reason, they didn't feel like they need to do it with Robotnik, but like they're all their main players. They're going to get a new set of people, maybe in a game that they're yeah. already been working on in secret. And they're like, we have enough confidence that you guys are now going to be the voice for everything. Yeah. Moving forward. Uh, that that's possible yeah and if they're wanting to like make a clean break and i mean they say this every other year that like oh it's a new direction for sonic yeah, if, but if they're serious about it like making a clean break and like cleaning house with the voice cast would kind of indicate being a step mm -hmm. in that direction it is interesting though like like you said that uh, dr robotnik kevin pollack got retained and that that could mean one of two things one he's just so good as robotnik that they didn't want to get rid of him it's like jk simmons is j jonah jameson type situation <laughs> or it could be two he knows how to play ball and he's, he's yeah. not like he's been around long enough yeah he's not asking for gobs of money or anything he's not in the game that they've remade so they didn't need to get rid of him and they can just keep him and put him in the next one that could be mm. yeah that could be there's been talk that like uh one of the former voices of sonic the one who did it in the adventure games has like uh is like reaching out and and like trying to get back in and like do sonic <laughs> again <laughs> probably, probably not gonna happen it's probably not gonna happen they need to just unif they need to just unify the the universes bring in ben schwartz to do sonic and, and john ralphio should be sonic in the games too why not whoa whoa, whoa. how about how about they just make a good game first and then we'll worry about <laughs> i was gonna to say, <laughs> i was gonna say like they don't need to clear house with the voice actors they need to yeah. clear house with the fucking writers those yeah they do well <laughs> and, and they have uh the two head writers of the of the series have basically been fired uh oh, thank god no guys more named, mountain of kleenexes yeah uh dudes named warren graff and ken pontac they're out so no more baldy mcnose hair type bullshit um they they are apparently out uh i don't know who the new writers are going to be but according to Dan this leaker Harmon. Oh my God. <laughs> I'd play that game. Can you imagine? I would, play, I would pre order that shit. I don't pre order games, but I would pre order that shit. <laughs> it would be incredible. Uh, there, there, it would be a lot more of a, a mature rated type Sonic game if Dan yes. Harmon was in charge. <laughs> but apparently, uh, they're putting Sega of America in charge of the series because Sonic is apparently a lot more popular in the West and in Europe than it is in Japan. So they're they're I guess they're deciding to like let Sega of America kind of run the direction of the franchise. Although I guess like the actual games development will still be done in Japan, but I guess like more of like the planning and writing will happen in America. Okay. I like, was gonna like, say, is Sonic Team off of Sonic? Because that's that's all Japan. Like Right, right. Well, hmm. I think what they just mean that like the gameplay they'll they'll direct the way that the game will be like the story will be and everything. So it'll be more towards american western audiences and, but like the game playing stuff won't matter like they'll be able to design that but like the reasoning behind it you know like mm -hmm. like you know, sonic's decision making will be yeah. based more on chili dogs instead of <laughs> trying to get with some human lady yes they can finally <laughs> incorporate princess sally acorn into the canon dude well, i want to see that chicken robot and that drill robot like, yes. i want to see those grounder. guys dude <laughs> fucking yeah man yes i want a terrifying black-eyed Robotnik Eggman villain, yeah, you know, from the comic or from the the cartoon. When I was you had a terrifying black eyed murderous Eggman, but then Scratch and Grouter, right next. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's what the cartoon I'm, was. That's I'm going to rip was. Sonic's tongue out through his own anus and like, yeah. oh wow, my God, Robotnik, it's <laughs> really fucking dark, man. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see. I mean, like Sonic Generations was the last one I thought was any good. That was actually a pretty fun game. Yeah. cool idea but 
and then I, I wasn't what's Sonic Mania was like their big hit, right? Yep. That, Maybe that, one, yeah. that guy needs to get hired on officially because that was like one dude, wasn't it? Like uh I, it was it was kind of his vision, uh Christian yeah. Whitehead, I think. Yeah. But there was like a big team that worked on okay. it. Okay. Yeah, he's not they're not making another Sonic Mania. They've said that several times. Well, I mean, also he's moved on to uh Freedom Planet 2 he's been working on. That's oh, his he did the Freedom project. Planet game? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have never played the first one. Uh it looked fun. Yeah. The second one looks looks fun too, but um yeah, with him attached to it, I'm definitely much more interested because I really fucking love Sonic Mania. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Sonic Mania is incredible, and it seems like a missed opportunity to make it just a one-off. I really think that they should like get that team back and have them make a totally original game. Yeah, yeah, they uh, need they need to like. Well, if they do, I'm reading ahead here about 2D and 3D like separate teams. Like that, he should stick to that guy for 3D or 2D 2D stuff. Yeah, uh, and then I don't know what I mean. I don't know how they fix Sonic. No one knows. It's like Sonic and Peace in the Middle East. They're like on the same yeah. plane of existence. No one knows what to do. <laughs> well, they're saying that they're going to bifurcate the 2D and the 3D games. So there's no not going to be any more bullshit where it's like, oh, sometimes you're classic Sonic and yeah. you're side scrolling, and sometimes you're 3D Sonic, and it's uh, like modern gameplay. That was fun in Generations because it was yeah. like a gimmick one off thing. But then they tried to do it again in Forces. It was stupid and nobody liked it. Uh, so there's no going to be no more like switching back and forth. It's either going to be a fully 2D game or a fully 3D game. They are also supposedly getting rid of the boost feature. So you, you're not going to be able to boost anymore, which a lot of people hated. Supposedly the next 3D game is going to be fully in 3D. Um, and it sounds like there's going to be more exploration. There's going to be power-ups to get. There's going to be a spin dash in 3D. I mean, th this all sounds like really cool to me, but it also could be bullshit because keep in mind, this is rumors and leaks. But supposedly yeah. the person that leaked all this is pretty reliable. And, I think and what also they need to it, do. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, and also it depends on the execution. Yeah, like, they need to just yeah. straight up dump everything. Don't try and incorporate anything they've ever done before. Don't hold on to these ancient uh adventure mechanics that have been like every 3D game. Like a great game, not saying it was bad, but like it's also a really fucking old game. Like they need to like not be restrained. I'm saying it's bad. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> You just need to like think outside of the box and like like don't be like it seems like every Sonic game feels like it has to like it, it has I don't know it's just weird like they 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 only made adventures and that was like really popular right and then they've been kind of fucking up since then so yep. they keep just like going back to that format because it worked and they just don't know what to do and like you know <laughs> like it's, it's just try something that's not a werewolf yeah oh my god and and move forward and just. You know, I don't know. I don't know how I don't, to, I don't know how to fix it either. But like, like I I don't know how to fix it myself technically. Like I'm not a game designer, I'm not a game programmer. I don't know how hard it would be, but like I don't know why they haven't tried harder to transfer things that were great in the 2D games into the 3D games. Like exploration. There's a lot of exploration in the 2D games. And like Sonic can go some places, Tails can go some places, Knuckles can go some places, you know, and like there's that sort of like that and they haven't really tried to recreate that because there's been so much focus in the 3d games on speed like yeah. speed is big time and like adventure one had a little bit of exploration like in the hub worlds and stuff but besides that in the actual levels it's all about speed and like as i've always said speed is like intricately entwined in sonic there's no way around it that's like his gimmick is like he can go really fast but like can go really fast and always going really fast <laughs> for two different yeah. things and they never really embrace that in the 3d games and i think what that i think that they could they can they have a chance to do really great and like uh i hope that they can pull it off all right hear me out what if it's like donkey kong 64 and you can switch between sonic and tails and knuckles within the same stage haven't they what? done that they have done uh, that in sonic heroes yeah where you yeah, they yeah, all yeah, ran that, around together yeah but that doesn't count that's not like exploration you know no. They, like like big Donkey Kong sixty four style levels, and you got to collect golden <laughs> bananas. Yeah, you got you got to retrace every like the entire level six times in order to, to get everything Honestly, with every single to, character. Yeah, try a little harder at just looking at what Nintendo's doing and trying to steer a little closer to that with some things. Just copy you know? Nintendo. It, it works I mean, for Sony. Just do it. Like <laughs> you know, like like a galaxy style game with Sonic characters. Like yeah, where you flip between them. You know, like. Oh, here's a. Uh, I got to scale up this wall, so I hit a button and I'm tail uh, knuckles now, 
and you go up the wall and there's like certain things you do with knuckles and then oh yeah. and i gotta fly so i'm tails and then maybe instead of just like now i have to go fast it's like there are loop-de-loops and rail grinds that are inherently fast things but it's not all about being fast that then Sonic does. Yeah, or it's like you're exploring a big area and you can spin dash and like move around and it's like huge wide open area. And you know, so that's going fast, like makes sense to get from point A to point B and there's like collectibles and things to find. But then maybe there's like, you know, like mini game style stages that you access where all that's just like a run fast, like course. Yeah, yeah, like more like, yeah, the old ones. And then like there can be random, like it flips between all three characters, like, so like Knuckles, it's like, uh, they're, let's say they're all like uh, speed based in a way. So like one is like Ariel going through like uh, uh, in, uh, Star Fox as Tails. Um, another one is uh, you're, you're going at like railing rhymes, you know, like Sonic. And then Knuckles, it's like you have to like punch through like bricks and like leap over walls and like beat up guys. But you got to like, beat up a car. Well, you know, like a ball's <laughs> going after you, but you have to fight at the same time, yeah, you know, yeah. like something like mm-hmm. that, you know. Yeah, I would play that. That sounds like a great game. They should hire us for Sega of America. <laughs> no, they just need to yeah, fire yeah. everyone that they have been making games and, yes. and hire someone who knows how to make games to do that. Yeah, we work for scale. We're going to be much cheaper than those other writers, Sega. So bring us on, buddy. <laughs> go go bring on, do, like, just, uh, what do they call it? Uh, outsource it out to the fucking guys who made ukulele or yeah. something. You know, like, get those yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Swallow your pride and get some people who... who didn't forget how to make video games to make this game yeah they're, play, they're just gonna, tonic. they're just gonna get on fiber and find a bunch of people <laughs> that's what they've been yeah. doing aaron <laughs> yeah dude, for real <laughs> it's it's been such like amateur hour at sega ever since like 1998 it's just been amateur hour over there i don't know what i mean maybe even before that like if you look at the history of sega they were always kind of like a really kind of shoddy company that like shouldn't have been as successful as they were but somehow they did yeah, they, I mean, they had people, a console. They had a console that was that was like, I mean, like they they were they were good. They were big in arcades, and they had consoles. They had a console that was a big hit and like came out at the right time to be a contrast did. to Nintendo. And well, like, it was like it was like lightning in a bottle because like they <laughs> they they put like so much money into the Genesis because the Master System didn't do that well really, but it did okay. But then they put like all this money into the Genesis. They like packed in games with it which was crazy like they were losing so much money on each genesis they sold and like they were going up against nintendo which had a stranglehold on the industry and they like rushed it to market like didn't have all this software really but it worked like their crazy strategy worked and they ended up like you know making a lot of money and rivaling the snes for that generation mm-hmm. so you know a little and bit then, of luck and a little then, bit of then Dreamcast came out and Sony like had its fedora and and then Duster and Katana and teleported behind. It's like, sorry, kid. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, that's all she wrote. Well, the the PlayStation had been out. That would have been on the PlayStation PS- 2. Yeah, PS2, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna yeah say. And that's like, yeah, I mean, they, no yeah. one stood a chance against that. That Not, was too, too, too big. No, un- unbeatable. The, the then, champion. And they weren't doing great after the Saturn. The Saturn didn't do well either. So like, no, That's not two really. in a row that they just mm-hmm. couldn't couldn't come back from the one two punch really knocked them out. Yeah. Well, speaking of Sega, and uh, it's not really Sega, but sort of related, um, Yuji Naka and Naotomo Oshima, the creators of Sonic, their their new game Balan Wonderworld has a demo out right now on uh, on well, it's on Switch, but I suppose it's on other things too. But I played it on Switch. I couldn't find it on my series. Um, uh, mm-hmm. oh, sorry. I've heard mixed things. I, I didn't yeah. play it or looked at any videos, but uh, it seems to be a little all over the place. But I've also heard yeah. that they uh, didn't put everything that's available in the game into the demo. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. It's it's interesting. Uh, I, I enjoyed playing the demo. Very simplistic. Like it feels like a game that was like made to sell on mobile where you only need like one button. But <laughs> but it, it's a, it was fun. Really good music. That that was the, the high point for me. I was like humming the music all day after I played the demo. So yeah, I'm not sold on it, but it's interesting. You know, uh, I I I would rent it for sure. I don't know if I would pay full price for it. Uh, actually, I do know. I certainly wouldn't pay full price for it, but I would definitely rent it. It's sitting in my Switch right now. I'm looking forward to checking it out, but I don't have I don't have very high hopes. Yeah. Well, let's let's shift gears. Uh, I, another important news story that I wanted to talk about here, and Aaron, this one involves one of your favorite people on the internet, Alana Pierce. And oh, really? 
I, I heard about this story from a YouTube video that she made. Other people have reported on it as well, but she talked about it on YouTube. That's how I heard about it. Uh, have you heard about this? That uh, Shadow of Mordor, their their nemesis system, has been patented. I heard no. that they've been trying up for years to to get a patent on it. Apparently, yeah. Huh. Uh, which is weird. I guess there's like some real specifics in it because I've seen it in like Path of Exile is a free to play like Diablo style game. And every year they do these leagues that um, add like a content, like there's the regular game. It's always the same, but then they have these little leagues that change parts of it. And one of them was very similar to like, here's the guy you take him down and it, you know, the stack, the same kind of basic idea, but I guess they can't do that anymore. But yeah, I thought it was really weird that they would want to do that. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's very strange. Yeah. So, okay. So I have questions. So like, does this mean that nobody can develop, like, does this mean that the idea in a video game of having nemesis who like, who you develop some sort of relationship with, but like, and it evolves and you kill them or they like remember you and stuff like that. No video game can copy that idea. Or is it just like they're specific? This is our algorithm and da, 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 this specific stuff nobody else can do. But if you develop a, st a similar style system, as long as it's not like directly our code, then that's fine. What does it mean? Help me. Well, uh, so the, I haven't read the patent filing because you, you got to have like brain damage to like want to read <laughs> a patent filing. They're written in like very difficult to understand language. There's all kinds of like engineer technical talk. You have to have a separate certification from just a normal law degree to do patents because of how stupid and complex it is. But from what I understand, they, they go into very great detail about their system and all the different algorithms of it, because the system, I guess, is pretty complex um, in terms of how it's coded and implemented. So, and they had to file their patent a whole bunch of times, like Sam was saying, before they finally got it accepted. And so it's probably pretty narrow and specific. So there's probably ways around it, but, you know, it's like... It, I'm not sure how they would enforce this patent. It's maybe more of a deterrent, like to stop other companies from trying. They're like, ah, oh, fuck it. We don't want to worry about it. You know, what if we get sued? You know, we might win, but we oh, here don't we go. have to go to a court or anything. So like most patents, there's probably a way around it, but it, it could still end up in court. Developers can still create similar systems that aren't a one-to-one -one recreation of monolith program. However, the mercenaries in Assassin's Creed Odyssey or Watchdog Legion's fascinating census system are recent examples of dynamically generated NPCs and social networks that would likely not be met with a legal challenge. Though as members of both the Mordor games and Ubisoft teams have said, such systems are a major collaborative effort requiring considerable resources and developed time. Uh, it's from IGN. It looks, they've got some photos. It's, I think it's it's not it's not the code, but like, uh, like a specific like this NPC, you react with him and he knows these people and that affects how they feel. And it's like a whole diagram, like a tree flow chart and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. I think it's it, more like we, we, we have, we have uh, charted out how our nemesis system works. And if you just copy it from our game, we can sue the shit out of you. If you okay. do your own system from the ground up and it's similar, that's one thing. But if you just try and look at how we did it and I feel like we're, I feel like the re it's not malicious that they're doing this, but because we basically remember last episode we talked about uh, Nintendo, the NES, and how people were just making yep. cartridges, putting in. We're kind of in that same place because anyone can make a video game, yep. and apparently anyone can put it on Steam, and it, and it, pretty much some of the bullshit I've seen on Steam. So that, I could we, see someone just doing it, you know, like like China, like ten, you know, just like making a mobile version of it, just literally copying it. Yeah. Go ahead, Aaron. Sorry. Oh, I was gonna say, guys, I, it's crossed my mind multiple times that we should make a bullshit game and put it on Steam. Just, <laughs> just saying, I think Thrill we could is. do it, and the, and we could have our own game, uh, game production company, the one stage at a time, yeah, game productions, and it would be fun. We uh, can't use the Nemesis system. Anyway. We can't use the Nemesis. System. We can make our own. Damn it, we can do it. <laughs> well, so, it's okay. weird. It's really weird because patents are are ideas, like. Uh, there, it's the only kind of intellectual property that actually says you own an idea. Like with copyrights, it's the expression of an idea. And with a trademark, it's something that like represents your brand. But with 
with a patent, it's literally, you're saying, I own this idea, like for a limited time until it expires. And there's like a hard limit on when that is. But uh, so they're, they're saying this is our idea and we're, we're, we're owning it. And that's happened before, like Namco apparently had a patent on the idea of having a mini game on a loading screen. Uh, yeah. And they, they got that like, in like 2005 or something. So they, they like, you know, anyone who ever, you know, hated a loading screen in those 10 years where they were really bad there, Namco is the reason why no one could have fun on their loading screens. <laughs> yeah, you know, when I was thinking about this, my only thought is, well, then we're just going to forget about this system over time. Yeah. Because if only they can do it, then there's going to be like one more game and then it's not... As soon as that Mordor game doesn't sell well, then it's going to be gone forever. Yeah. That all there, that's all that's going to happen, really. And it's yeah. already kind of happening. Like, the second game wasn't as popular. It seems really short-sighted say, to me. I, yeah, I, I was going to say that the second game didn't really do so well, and I haven't heard any rumblings about a third or anything, but they're probably going to implement it in some other game, right? I guess. Uh, but it just seems like if they can't make this work, what a way, colossal waste of money and time. Yeah, why pay right. for all the lawyers and all the filing fees? 2015, they, they've been working on this since 2015. Jesus. So, like, I, I guess they figure this is the future of the of the Warner Brothers game company, I guess. But if it they don't, what a... I mean, it's Warner Brothers, so they got all that extra money, but it just seems like a... If they don't well, maybe make this work, it's a huge waste of time. Maybe yeah. they'll license it out. I mean, you know, maybe they'll maybe they are thinking that other companies will want Dude, to use oh. it and they'll have to come and be like, hey, can we just pay you money? Probably and so. Use it. Yeah, that that's probably what they're thinking. But if I was another company, I would just be like, let's just make a different kind of game. Like, why? Yeah, man, bro, yeah sure, sure. But Ian, honestly, this is like why haven't they made a Batman game using that yet? Yeah. That it would be kind of perfect for that. Yeah, it'd be, and it's Warner Brothers. They've got the license for it. That'd be a perfect game, some kind of hero game. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It just see, to me, it seems like, like, like there's a whole room of people, and like Warner Brothers is, just runs in, going, ha 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 ha! I did it! <laughs> Finally, you assholes! I fucking patented it! And everyone just like the music doesn't stop. A couple people look at them. They all go back to talking and drinking. No one cares. Yeah, it's, it's like, like the like, sixth sense. They're dead. No one can see them. Yeah, it's like no, it's like <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool story, Warner Brothers. Yeah, but no one or, fucking cares. Maybe they know something we don't. Maybe there's maybe there's some big games that are under development and they're using this sort of idea. Well, and they just I mean, screwed over the competition big time. Um, we don't know. Maybe <laughs> they saw more. Uh, you know, like the two games they mentioned in the article. Uh. Uh, there were two big games you know watch dog legion and, and assassin's creed odyssey i haven't played either of them uh, is legions even out i don't even know if legions is out or not yeah, I don't know. but maybe they saw them coming and they were trying to get ahead of that but they didn't but they just kept going with it i don't know but yeah it's a dumb idea because it it stifles creativity and i don't think there are like uh there's not that many patents for video game ideas like we talked about the namco thing and then of course back in the 70s ralph bayer copy or patented the idea of a video game <laughs> and uh, magnavox like had the patent on the idea of video games for quite a while but uh but like in terms of like mechanics in a video game that's like never been done before and like uh board games famously they've uh, the patent office has always denied board games a patent on on the ideas of the mechanics of their board game. Uh, so they've never been able to patent any ideas in a board game. So board game creators now are probably like pissed off because they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna let fucking Warner Brothers patent this idea, but they won't patent any of like the super complex board game mechanics out there. I wonder if now that they've won their patent, can they other people point to that as an example of why they should be able to get their stuff patent and is this going to be like a chain reaction of like yeah like weird shit that just gets locked down and no one can make video games anymore <laughs> yeah dude it could be like because there you know we've there's been lots of hardware patents like things like how a, a joystick works or how yeah. rumble works and things like that and there's been lots of lawsuits about that but like in terms of like software like the ideas behind game mechanics that's really that's this is a, a new territory and it does set a weird and disturbing precedent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess so, but like that stuff, I mean, there's there is a lot of development time. There's a lot of like, and it was a it was a unique idea when it came out, right? Like no game oh, had ever much. done it before. Like it's like all these games, you, like if they had tried to patent 
jumping in a video game. <laughs> like that would never have flown. You know, that's not going to fly. But like this whole thing that they like they showed all the work like this, like they showed their homework. They're like, here's what we did. We made this. No one had ever done it before. It was a lot of fucking work. <laughs> and it's ours. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to say I support it, but like, it's much more understandable than just some random, like I, you, I patenting to turn using the right joystick to look around, you know, like it all depends on how they use it to enforce it. You know, like if they yeah, use it to go after someone that's not. like, close enough and they have enough money and lawyers to use that as a reason to shut a game down yeah even though it's not quite the same thing like 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 it's they know they're not going to win but they can keep them from making the game because they're small enough to get locked up in a court case like i'm sure that no listen no big corporation's ever been an asshole like that (laughs) so i'm i'm not worried about that (laughs) well Okay, speaking of big corporations, this is where Alana Pierce comes back into it because in her video, she just kind of takes WB to task for this and talks about how bad it is and stifles creativity. And everyone in the comments is pointing out that Alana now works for Sony Santa Monica. So it's kind of weird for like, you know, someone who works for like a first party company to be saying like that the third party, like a major third party developer is like you know doing something bad or that you know they're they're utilizing their intellectual property in an inappropriate way when it's like hey, you work for sony i mean they they have lots of intellectual property and they're not shy about enforcing it yeah she's still allowed to have her own opinion she might think the same thing about sony stuff this is just what's in the i'm not yeah, but she know. won't put a video out about that she, yeah, <laughs> yeah, she might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well that's the thing it's like you know, she's entitled to her opinion but like you know she works for sony yeah, she ain't going to get fired. Like, she's not going to do that. She's not going to go and put out a video that gets her ass fired. But, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, that's fair enough, I guess. <laughs> all right. Well, that that's uh, all I got on that topic. Kind of interesting, kind of messed up. I mean, I, I don't know. It, it probably will come to nothing. I can't like imagine. A wait and see be... kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll, it's, like, it's probably like the Namco thing. They'll have the patent for 20 years, and then it'll run out, and then... You know, no, no one will care. No one will I, care. I gotta say though, like I gotta disagree with her about like it's stifling stifling creativity. I think that this would almost by them doing this almost would encourage creativity, right? It makes people think more outside the box. Like we can't do that. We want to do that. We can't do that. What else can we do? You know, like what else can we do that's maybe similar to that, but not exactly that enough that we won't get in trouble. Maybe go in a totally different direction to try well, and get people's attention. Okay, but I, but here's, here's a counterpoint. One of the biggest and most pervasive mechanics in games uh, in the last like 10, 15 years is death mechanics like Dark Souls or more like, like Demon Souls did it first. Mm-hmm. But like that kind of death mechanic, so pervasive in the industry. So many games use it. Hollow Knight. Basically a genre. It. it made a genre. Yeah. Uh, imagine if from software had patented that mechanic back when demon souls was made and then like all these other games that utilized it just wouldn't have gotten made because they would have i mean they would have made a different game right because they could they're not going to try like to just try to work around and you know do something that's kind of similar but not totally similar because they don't want to get sued so they're they're just going to be like well we'll just do something different and avoid the problem altogether or and like I think that's uh, what's happening here i mean there you could imagine uh, sorry, Sam. Go ahead. So, what you were going to say? Uh, but I was gonna, I just did along those same lines. If whenever Metroid came out, if if Nintendo decided to patent the idea of that kind of exploration and map progression, there would that would there'd be so many games that wouldn't exist anymore. But I, it's 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 we're clearly not going to get a genre of those games with, with Warner Brothers. But I think it's the idea that that could eventually. It's all about does this open the floodgates for other companies? And if it becomes pervasive, then it, I think it, it will eventually cause, it could kill genres of games from never existing if only one company gets to make the one thing. You know, it's like uh, if, if, uh, if Apple said, you know, it was like, no, no, no smartphones but us. You know? well, Apple didn't invent the smartphone. But, but, but I, you know what I mean? I take your point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I'm not saying that it won't stifle creativity because it certainly could, but I'm also not saying it 100% necessarily will. It all, yeah, and I understand where you're coming from it too. It's like, here's here's the thing, and and then you got like little like, oh, all right, challenge accepted, guys. We're like, <laughs> let's take that and we'll change it enough where you can't sue us, but it's still it, now maybe we made it better. Maybe yeah. we made it better somehow. 
but it all depends on how far they how how much money gets put into the patents and like how much control and the reasoning behind it and you know that kind of stuff it's all a great big we'll see how it yeah goes. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh how are we doing on time there Aaron? um we're we're at about time we should probably wrap things up all right well we'll wrap it up uh we we can uh again put off talking about godzilla versus kong for next time <laughs> oh i assumed we weren't going to talk about that <laughs> we said all we needed to say offline that's true it, it does look tight though it does uh i've heard a lot of theories that uh it's going to be mecha godzilla i think oh. that it's confirmed i think there's a toy like when it's fucking up the <laughs> boat when when kong's on that boat and it's like fucking up the boat Everyone's like, ooh, Godzilla wouldn't just attack him like that, though, because Kong's a good guy, so it's probably Mecha Godzilla. Yeah, I've heard rumors that, uh, like, it's Mecha Godzilla, but at first they, like, put organic skin on him, so it looks yeah, like yeah, Godzilla. Yeah. It's and, like, like a Terminator, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, like, turns his eyes red. And, you know, yeah, dun, I, think dun, the, dun, dun. I think there's a glimpse of Mecha Godzilla, like, a very quick glimpse of Mecha Godzilla in the trailer. Um, like, just, like, from an angle, lots of debris everywhere, but, like, you yeah. can tell that it's not, like, Kong or Godzilla up there. Um, but, yeah, no. It's going to be fucking cool. Like, it's going to be fucking cool. <laughs> it's going to be fucking cool. God, King Kong punching Godzilla in the face. Gets, he gets a Fuck giant yeah. fucking axe. Godzilla, and they're going to team up to fight Mecha Godzilla. It's, it's going to be cool. Yes, <laughs> Rap music the whole time. <laughs> I hope that they do a scene-for-scene scene rendition of They Live alley scene alley fight scene uh, <laughs> if it doesn't then it's a it's a one out of five uh <laughs> godzilla's trying to get kong to put on a pair of sunglasses ooh, so you can ooh, see ooh. Mecha godzilla <laughs> <laughs> i want to see godzilla get kicked in the nads <laughs> or king kong king kong get kicked in the nads <laughs> yes sir all right well we'll wrap it up there then uh fellas uh, this has been another good episode and i've enjoyed doing it with you but we're going to leave it until next time uh listeners at home we'll be back in about a week's time with the next episode of doom we're getting close to the end we're going to be on e4m6 which means uh well there's only eight and because we, we did nine the secret ones we've got six seven and eight left so that's only three more episodes and then we'll do our traditional uh wrap up uh post-mortem style episode after that but then it's going to be a brand new game and and we have a movie to review still oh, uh God. from what i understand a terrible <laughs> movie to review Doom is this annihilation this isn't officially confirmed in the schedule we're, we're it's gonna, happening <laughs> we're gonna discuss this with aaron off air if we, we if andy tries that. to start a new game without us doing it i will only be talking about that movie the entire episode while he's trying to start talking about it's gonna game. be like a cardboard cutout of me well well aaron is just like ranting about this movie like diagrams like <laughs> just, 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 like a canadian <laughs> And, right. But but speaking of that, be on the lookout, everybody, for our new game. We're going to be announcing it pretty soon. We're That's still, right. We're still finalizing how we're going to do it, what game we're going to do. But it's got we got to choose soon. Which is happening. We have no uh, choice. <laughs> it's going to be a totally new and different uh, style of game. It may not be like a traditional like you know level one, level two, level three type of game. And if you're listening at home and you're saying like, oh, that that's, doesn't fit with the established format of the show, then I have to say this. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Don't tell us how to do <laughs> Start our Start your own goddamn podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Turn this show off right now and never listen again. No, listen. Hate, hate, listen. We don't care. Just listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> listen so you can hate us. Yes, exactly. We'll give you more reasons to hate us. It'll be great. We'll all have a good time. All right, Sam. Uh, what what words of advice do you have for our listeners today, Sam? Watch they live to so get my reference because it's amazing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I fully endorse that. All right, Aaron. What do you got to say to the listeners at home before we leave today? I want to say thank you everybody for listening. Please go to onestageattime.com for more of our things. Please like, share, and subscribe. We really appreciate it. Uh, follow us on our socials. Uh, we post there sometimes. Sometimes we do yeah. that when we, when when we, we feel, feel like, like it. it. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for joining me off for this episode. Uh, Sam, why don't you give us that sign off? Save and continue. <laughs>